Hi, welcome back. The topic for today's presentation is Ant, the Build Automation Tool. As a J2W developer, we'll be compiling your Java classes, we'll be packaging these classes into jar files, and then we'll be packaging these jar files along with the other web components like JSP files, GWTs, web deployment descriptors into a WAR file which stands for Web Archive. And then you package this WAR file along with the deployment descriptors required by our application servers into a ER file which stands for Enterprise Archive. Once you have the ER file, you can deploy this file onto an application server like WebLogic, WebSphere or JBoss. Once deployed, you can test your application, you can access your application from the browser, your testing team can access it, or if it's a production environment, your clients can access it. This entire process of compiling Java classes, packaging them into jars, building the war, building the ER file, and then deploying it, the process, the entire process is called the build process, and Ant is a tool which automates this entire build process. Ant, which stands for another neat tool, is written in Java, and, you, and it uses XML as a configuration file. You now know why I have started my presentations, J2W presentations with, XM, with the topics that include XML because it plays a key role across J2W technologies. Let's start by looking at a sample and XML. This is just the skeleton again, as I always do with my theory. The root element of an and XML file is project. And the project element has multiple target elements within it. The targets are nothing but logical units of work. For example, compiling your Java classes could be one target. So as you see here, compile is one target. And these targets in turn, inside them, they have the AND tasks. For example, Java C is an AND task. As I said, this is just the skeleton. And it doesn't have all the attributes like source directory or where to copy the output class files and all that. But when you go to the documentation, uh, the link for which I'll be posting on my blog, you will see additional details for each of these tasks. But at a high level, any AND file will have the project, it should have a project root element, it should have the targets defined, and then within those targets, you use the tasks that AND provides you with. And each of these tasks can depend on the other tasks. For example, the target I have here is jar. Even before you uh, build a jar of your project or, or your application, you need to compile the classes. So the jar depends on compile. And what compile does is it uses the Java C tasks from AND to compile your source code. We can have multiple targets. So we can have a var target, which then depends on jar. And we can have an ER target, which actually depends on the war. And then the deploy target, which actually deploys your ER into the application server, can depend on the ER target. That's how I, we link each of these targets. And we can always have a default target, which in this case is jar. So once you install ant and you try to run ant from the command prompt, like let's say ant, uh, you give the build file name, which by default uh, Ant looks for build.xml. You can name your build XML file, uh, whatever you want to, but by default Ant looks for build.xml file uh, in any directory in which you run Ant. There are a number of tasks. When you go to the Ant documentation, again, the link uh, which I'll be posting on my blog, you will find that there are numerous tasks that cover almost everything you want to automate. Uh, and uh, Ant also allows you to write custom tasks. And that's nothing but coming up with your own Java class again, because Ant is all Java. So you write it to come up with your own task. All you'll be doing is extending a, a class file from Ant and overriding the methods and you can start using your task within your build scripts. A good example for a custom task is the JUnit task that comes from JUnit. So that allows you to run JUnit tests or unit tests from within your build. So you can build your classes, you can build your application, then before you deploy, you can run your tests to make sure nothing is broken. 
and there is a JUnit report and task which generates beautiful HTML reports which are um, easy to view uh, and you can see all your test results from within the browser. I'll be talking about more on JUnit and how to integrate Ant with it and how to use these two together uh, with Hudson when I talk about continuous integration in the future. So it's that simple. Um, now you know, to summarize what I have just said, you know what Ant is. It's a build automation tool. It automates the entire build process within a J2EE application environment for us. And uh, it uses XML configuration uh, to do that. Ant is Java based tool, but it uses XML configuration. And uh, here is the skeleton of the XML configuration. It starts with the project root element. Within the project, we can define multiple targets. Targets are nothing but logical units of work like compilation, uh, jarring, building a war file, copying files from one place to another. It could be anything. As I said, there are multiple tasks. And you need not remember all these tasks. You just need to have an overall idea of wh what Ant supports. And you can always go back to Ant documentation. It's just like referring to your Java, JDK, a API documentation. You can always refer back to that and start using those tasks to come up with your own and build. So you now know um, that uh, and will have a root element. Just to reiterate, you now know that the and will have a project root element within which it will have multiple targets and within the targets you have the tasks which are provided by and. In the next presentation, I'll be doing uh, Eclipse hands-on, a quick introduction to how a real-time Java project looks like in Eclipse followed by an Ant hands-on example. If you have any questions, if you want to give any feedback, you can always email me at bharatsblog at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Keep sharing and learning.